Greetings to you all. Um, this is JP from Wolfish Bay, Namibia. And it's a privilege again to share the word with you as the Lord has been speaking to me about this oneness and I want to share uh, more of this with you. Today, today I want to go into the topic of the economy of grace that is within oneness. And we, we have seen in the, in the previous sessions that I did, I spoke about oneness is not sameness. But today I want to move on and tell you that in oneness there is an economy of grace or there is grace that there is meeting every need that, that is within this corporate body. It's a place of great grace. It's a place of great blessing. And grace is so important in the life of a believer or a son of God. And, and we need to know how to work with the grace of God, uh, what it is, how it, how it functions within our lives so that it can be of benefit to us and that we can be a benefit to everybody else. In oneness, grace is really, um, really just amplified. It, is, it enriches everybody. And so let's go to the scriptures and, and we will take it from there. I'm reading from Acts chapter 4 and we read again from verses 31. It says, And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and they spoke the word of God with boldness. That's important to notice that all were in oneness, all enjoy the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Uh, whatever happens to this people, it happens to everybody. Yeah, that's provided if there is agreement and oneness. Verses 32, And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul. Neither said any of them that the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things common. So they shared what they had, uh, with each other. They did not see it as their own because there was one heart and one soul. Verses 33, And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And yet is, And great grace was upon a few, no, but upon all. Every believer that was there, every son of God that was there, part of this 5,000 plus company, uh, enjoyed having great grace upon them all. All of them functioned in great grace. And that's amazing because, again, what many times happens to us is that only a part or a member or uh, a fraction, a few enjoy perhaps grace or favor. But in the scripture, because of the oneness and the one heart and the one soul, everybody was enjoying a great grace that was upon them all. And, and notice the next thing that happens because of the grace that was uh, being shared by every person. Verses 34, Neither was there any among them that lacked, for as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them and brought the prices of the things that were sold. And here in the again, oneness, nobody had lack because grace was there and grace was upon each person and grace is really that that supply of God uh, to meet every demand that there is in the body of Christ whether that is spiritually or physically grace can meet the demand so it is of no um, it is not by uh, per chance that the scriptures would say uh, when it says there was grace upon them all, that immediately it would say, and nobody lacked. Because the scripture is clear that God gives us grace as it is the sufficiency that meets every need that we have in the body of Christ. And, and so we got to see the importance how oneness brings us to this corporate grace, this grace that is shared by everybody, and everybody is walking in a greater grace and so everybody's really just functioning at, at their best. There's joy, there's, there's, there's no lack, and there's dominion, as I said in the previous sessions. So let's look at um, first, first, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 8, 
and then, or sorry, not chapter 8, verses 9, and we look at this scripture at verses, verses 6. So 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6, it says, But this I say, he would sow sparingly, shall reap also sparingly. He who sows bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he purposes in his heart, let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God, then it says, and God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you always, having all sufficiency uh, in all things, and may abound to every good work. So here the Lord is telling us through it, in, in these scriptures, he's telling us that his grace, all grace, he makes all grace abound towards us or he's able to do that. And when grace abounds towards us, it is able, it is able to, to, to meet every need that we have and it's able to supply us with everything we need for every good work. And so this scripture is telling us that grace not only meets your spiritual needs, but also your physical needs. And, and, and sometimes that, is, that can be quite difficult to, to understand that how grace, when you see it as something spiritual, how it can meet some, a physical need. And it is my goal to, to in these next couple of um, parts in this message that I'll be doing, to explain how grace can meet not only your spiritual needs, but also your physical needs in, this, in, this, um, in your life. So as we look at this, we, we read in Acts chapter 4 of great grace being upon them all and then nobody lacked. Now, what happened in Acts chapter 4 and why it happened that everybody started um, selling what they have and, and just providing for each other and looking after each other and distribution was being made amongst them. Uh, Acts, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and chapter 9, here Paul is explaining to us in a greater detail what actually was happening. All the things mentioned in 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and chapter 9 is things that we see that, is, that was in, in Acts chapter 4. And when we, when we compare the two, we can come to realize the profound effect that grace can have on the heart of a believer and on a corporate company of people when they are under the influence of grace and when grace powerfully is at work. And Acts chapter 4 says that there was great grace upon them all. Now, uh, last year the Lord spoke to me uh, you know, about the economy of grace and in the beginning of the lockdown, he began to speak again to me about this economy of grace that, that is available within the kingdom of God or in the house of Jesus Christ, God the Father. Uh, this economy that's available and how if we better understand this economy, we can, we can enrich ourselves in the grace of God. Because any person that understands an economy well, will be able to better function within the economy. And in that economy, if he can function better, he can enrich himself through the economy by engaging in the economy. And, and in God, there is an economy that's available. While there is a natural economy, the economies of, of nations and, and these things. But now in God, there's also an economy. And in God's kingdom, the, the question is, are we tapping in or are we engaging in the economy of God so that we can better live and better function for God and do the things that we need to do? Without the grace of God, you will, you are, will be unable to fulfill your purpose and to fulfill the assignment that God has for you. We read this in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and we read it in verses 10, where Paul is writing and he says, But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. 
but I laboured more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. So here Paul says that who he was at the time when he was writing this letter to the Corinthians, who he was at that moment in time was as a result uh, of the grace of God that was bestowed upon him or that was given to him or in which he was functioning. In other words, the, the demand of the call of God upon his life to be an apostle, to travel to nations, to endure sufferings, to receive great revelation and write letters and to give us uh, uh, almost two-thirds of, of the New Testament writing these letters. He operated in signs, wonders, miracles, healings, um, spoke prophetically. He was just an amazing a man when we read about him and yet he says all of that that he was doing was as a result of the grace of God that was upon his life. In other words, grace meets the demand for the call of God upon your life. And without grace, you cannot become everything that God wants you to be. So therefore, it is uh, of great importance for us to understand what the grace of God is and how it works and and how we should work with it and operate by it. Uh, because without this, we will never be able to achieve what we must achieve. And one of the reasons why the, uh, the, the believers in Acts chapter 4 were giving, were selling their houses, selling their properties and the things that they have and were distributing to each other, was not, it, was, it was not by chance. It was because of the grace of God that was at work. Why would Paul give his life the way he did in service to our Lord Jesus Christ. It was because of the grace of God that was at work within his heart. The book of Hebrews chapter 13 says that, that our hearts must be established in grace. And grace is, is deposited into our hearts. And grace is that way it must work. It must work within our hearts. The grace of God is also to be with our spirit. There are many scriptures that say, and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. So grace is, is what my spirit uses to function in maximum capacity and in that, in that demand that God has for my, for my life. And every good work that God is asking or desiring me to do for him, grace meets that need. As we read in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, where it says, and God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you have all sufficiency, always having the all sufficiency that in every good work, so that you may do every good work. So every good work is the, 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 the demand to do that or um, God requiring me to do or the good works that he has set aside for me to do before the foundation of the world. Grace is what's going to resource me to do that work. And unless I understand how to walk in the grace of God, I will not be able to, to, to do everything that God is asking me to do. And you know, in the book of Galatians chapter 2, Paul says, I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the Lord, then Christ is dead in vain. So even the grace that you have received can, can be frustrated, can be hindered, can be prevented from doing all that it must do in your life. And, and though you may have a call, a mandate, a purpose, a destiny, and, and everything that God is asking you to do, it, it can be the grace of God to do those things can be frustrated and you can be coming short of the call of God upon your life. And it is so important to understand how grace works in our life and how it helps us to achieve our destiny. You are what you are by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. And without that grace, you will not be able to be who you must be. Uh, Paul also goes on to say, not only am I the great, not only am I uh, what I am by the grace of God, but the labor that he had been doing um, that was more than the others was was not yet him, but it was the grace of God that was laboring in, in and through his life. So when we function better by the grace of God, it also helps us 
It also helps us in our laboring for God in the work that we must do. As I said just now, um, without grace, you are insufficient, insufficient to do the work that God is asking you to do. And it's so important to then understand, to have a clear understanding of what the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is. So I want to say to you, flip this thing around and say then to you, if you feel frustrated, if you feel like you're not achieving that which you must achieve, and you feel you're coming so short of what God has for you and what God is um, desiring for you, your call, your mandate, your destiny, and all those things, and you feel frustrated, can I say then that you are insufficient in grace? The, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is frustrated in your life because you do not understand how to work with the grace of God. In fact, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is meant to be administrated by you. And that's important to understand. And so I said at the start of this, of this part of the message, um, I said to you that I want to talk, about, I want to talk to you about the economy of the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Where did I get this word, the economy? Um, let's go to Ephesians chapter 3 and verses 1 so that we can explain this. Verses 1, it says, For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles, if you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given to me for you, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery as I wrote a four in few words. So in verses 2, Paul is saying, have you heard, if you have heard, of the dispensation of what? Of the grace of God, which was given to him for you. Now this word dispensation in the Greek, it, 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 there, there are various definitions, but one of the, the, the meaning of this word dispensation is economy. The another meaning of this word dispensation means the administration of household goods um, or the management of household affairs or goods. Um, so basically this word dispensation is talking about uh, we could have translated it in, and said and said that the scripture was saying Paul, Paul would be saying if you have heard of the administration of the grace of God that was given to me. It could also have been translated as, if you have heard of the economy of the grace of God that was given to me. Or it could have, had, it could have also have said, if you have you not heard of the stewardship or the management of the grace of God that was given to me. Now, if you go to, the, to Google and you go and look up the word economy, they will tell you, they will also tell you there that um, it comes from the Greek word oikonomia and which means the management of household affairs or resources and so so it's two words put together oikos for house uh, nemean or no, uh, nomia which comes for management and stewardship so this word here so it is telling us that there is an economy of grace or the uh, that we have to have to understand. Paul says, have you heard of my dispensation? The dispensation of the grace of God that is given to me um, so that it can, for you, not just for me, but for you, so that I can help you. And, and part of his job as an apostle was the distribution of the grace of God unto the saints. Now, in any economy, in any economy, there is a demand and there is a supply. And there is a distribution, there is a consumption, and there is also the management of resources. Now, that we understand in a natural economy, in the, in the nations that we live in. But in God, there is the same. There is also a demand and there is a supply. There, there is a whole cycle that has to, to, to exist within an economy for it to function at its best. And so in a natural economy, when you have demand and supply and distribution and consumption, you have the distribution of a resource and then you have the one who's the consumer who consumes this resource or uses this resource 
but in exchange for that which has been distributed, the resource, he exchanges, he gives money and money goes back. So there is a cycle that happens. Uh, and that cycle should not be broken because the minute the cycle breaks, then there is, then the economy will begin to suffer because of this chain or the cycle that has, that has been interfered with. So we are all in a pandemic uh, of COVID-19. We, we are here, we are in lockdown where we are in Wolfish Bay, Namibia. Uh, I do not, uh, I'm not so aware of what's happening in other countries because I have not been following it that so much anymore. Um, but you know, we are in Wolfish Bay, we are in lockdown. Um, the economy is having some challenges, but the, the supply is being kept back and there's a great demand, but the supply is not there. People are unable to work, open their businesses. And so we're having a great demand for, for meeting our needs, but the supply is not there. And, and I want to tell you that when the supply stops or when the distribution stops, or when these things are interfered with, the economy suffers. Now, it is exactly uh, the same, uh, except the, that we, we don't, it's not 100% the same. I, I, I take those words back. It's not 100% the same, but in this economy, there also, in God's economy, there has to be a cycle. There is a giving and a receiving. There is there's also a consumption. And there's also a distribution. There is a demand and there is a supply. Um, in, in terms, in, in the Bible, a demand would be he who hungers, hungers. Um, that hunger is a demand that you have. And the supply is that God would give you what you hunger for, that bread that you need. If you are thirsty, come, all who are thirsty, come drink from the fountain of life. So the supply is the fountain, but the, the demand is your thirst for it. And so there is a demand and a supply here in God's kingdom, but there's also a giving and a receiving. And that is a cycle. I give, I receive. I give, I receive. I give, I receive. And so it, it's distributed, but it returns. It distributed, but it returns. In this way, um, in this way, we, we see that there is an economy that is at work here. And if we don't understand that economy and how we can, and how in this economy what is being distributed is the grace of God and what is being received again is the grace of God. And why is the grace of God being received? For distribution. Why? So that it can meet the need that the body of Christ has, whether that need is physical or spiritual, the grace of God is able to meet that need and it's able to, uh, it's able to resource us in a sense so that we can do, clothe us, uh, give us the sufficiency so that we can do every, every good work. Paul said, I prayed, he said, I prayed to the Lord three times concerning a thorn in the flesh that was bothering him. And he prayed three times and the Lord answered him and said, my grace is sufficient um, for you. And he says, for in your weakness, uh, my strength is made perfect or my power. So there was a weakness, but when the grace of God comes, it meets that weakness and, 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 and the grace of God comes and it covers that weakness and it strengthens you so that when you function, though there's a weakness, it is now no longer visible. It's taken away because the grace of God is at work in your life. So you are not standing. The strength that you are now exhibiting from something that was once your weakness is grace, no longer you. So what are you standing in? You are standing in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. How are you able to be as strong as you are? By the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. And again, this is the impact that grace can have upon your heart, upon your life, upon all that you must do. And it's so important that we understand this economy that is at work. This economy that is at work. In Philippians chapter 4, 
Paul said, no church has come close to me except you in giving and receiving. Wow, you give, but you receive also. Now, many of us know that when we give, we find that we are not receiving. We give, but we don't receive. We give, but we don't receive. Somewhere there's a problem in your economy that is at work. And, and so when you think about that, we have to find out what is the problem. What is the problem? So going back to Acts chapter 4, when we read, and, uh, and great grace was upon them all, and the next verse says, and there was none among them that lacked. Uh, and they, what did they begin to do? They, why, why? So it means that there was people that had, came in with lack, but that lack, that, that demand was met by the supply of grace. And, and what happened was that the people began to sell their lands and their properties and they began to distribute. See, be all, all of a sudden, an economy is at work. The church of Jesus Christ is the house of our Father, our Heavenly Father. And in this house, there's the administration of, of the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. There's this distribution and there's consumption. There's the distribution and there's a consumption. And, uh, and we need to understand that there is an economy that you can live by. And the key in this economy is for you to start distributing, giving. It is no wonder that when Elijah came to the widow, the first thing he said to her when it was her last, he said, give first. And why did he want her to give? Because he wanted her to step into the economy of giving and receiving. Because when she gave, she received the miracle. And when she con continued giving, she continuously received the miracle. She would give and she would receive. She would give and she would receive. He had a demand that was material needs, so she distributed the material need to him. She had a demand for a physical need as well. He, Elijah, God supplied the, the miracle of provision by, through Elijah, by the grace of God that was on his life, and he supplied it to, the, to this widow woman. So there was a distribution and there was consumption by both of them. As she supplied, he ate. As he supplied, she ate also. Distribution, demand, supply, giving and receiving. Step into that economy of God that's available. But it starts by giving. When there was grace upon them all, the first thing that is recorded is they started giving, distributing, because it had an effect upon their life. And I want to encourage you with, with these words in your economy, in the economy of God, do not stop giving. Do not let your environment hinder you from giving. Do not let the pandemic hinder you from giving. What I'm telling you is what I'm living and is what I'm experiencing and is what I'm enjoying. It is amazing to see the miracle of provision in our lives, even in the midst of a lockdown. And uh, I bless you with those words. I will be back again to continue this message on the oneness, the economy of grace. Bye for now.